Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Alejandro Colina in a 15 plus 10 game on LeeChess.org. I'm opening with e4 this game. My opponent rated 22-28. Hard to find high-rated opponents. Sent out a seek for 2300 plus, but was getting no bites. So this opponent it is. All right, let's play d4. So we're probably gonna have a Pierce. Black playing knight f6. I'll play knight c3. Black could play e5 if they want to take this into Philidor waters, but most of the time black plays g6 in this position. And then I'll have a range of options. So f4 is the Austrian attack. It's the sharpest, most critical move. I think I'm just going to play knight f3, though. You know, I could go for f4 followed by a3, this cheeky little system. Yeah, let's do that, actually. I played this a couple times in faster games recently, and... This move I'm going to play next for bishop g7 looks very odd, but the point is to discourage black from playing c5, which is a counter-strike that black often tries to use in these positions. And I'll get into that in the analysis. So black just castles. Now here, I believe I should play knight f3 or bishop d3, just trying to remember which one. I think knight f3 is most flexible. Let's keep this bishop back for now. Usually the bishop will go to d3. But knight f3 develops and potentially adds more force to e5. And black goes for c5. Okay, so I'm at a crossroads here. I could take and play this position. So take, take, trade the queen's bishop e3. But as I recall, white is not that much better there. So the other option is to play e5 and open the position, or even play d5. But d5 doesn't look right to me. We're kind of in a Benoni that doesn't just jive well with the way I played it, especially a3, so I think I'm either going to take or play e5. If e5, the position gets highly volatile, though. e5, take, I probably take with the f-pawn, and then black can play knight g4, and my center is on the verge of collapsing, so maybe I should play that queen this middle game. Yeah, I think this is correct. I'm going to be very curious when I look this up afterwards, though, how many games have been played from this position, because... It's possible that white has taken some other approaches, like on move six. Okay, so bishop e3 wins a tempo by attacking this pawn. Black will probably play b6, but I think then bishop c4 is looking decent, yeah. When I said that I didn't think white has much here, that's just based on memory. It's possible I have a slight initiative. Even though black's king is castled and mine isn't, that isn't too big of a factor now that the queens are exchanged. And I'm pretty sure I've played this position before. Now I want to go bishop c4. So yeah, let's do this. Pressuring f7. Maybe I have a little something. I have more center space. Black does have to take care on this square. I'm trying to place it in my memory where I've had this before. Probably with an online game. Maybe even a standard game. Knight c6. Okay, so this guards the e5 square, so no knight e5. I could try to put the pawn in here, e5, but allowing knight g4 doesn't look right. Hence, I'm thinking about playing h3, taking away the g4 square from black's knight. I'm just wondering if it's a little slow. If I should be doing something else with this tempo. I could castle short, but I don't see a huge reason to castle. Also, it's kind of nice to have the g1 square if I do need to drop my bishop back. So I'm leaning towards h3. e5 is practically the only other move that makes sense to me. Let's go with h3. We'll just guard this square. Black could potentially play their knight or their bishop into g4, so it should be helpful. Second standard video in a row. I'm pumping out these videos at a leisurely pace these days. Thank you guys for bearing with me. <laughs> I know I was reminiscing a while back about the early days of when I was on YouTube. It doesn't seem that long ago, but I've been posting for two and a half years, and back then I was posting three videos a day when I started out my channel. Blitz, Bullet, and Standard. I was posting one of each each day. It was insane. Okay, Knight H5. So 
This looks at the g3 square. And if I play g4, I think Black's idea is knight g3, rook g1, and then take on c3, followed by picking up this pawn. So knight h5, very interesting. I could guard the g3 square. I could play king f2. I don't want to guard it with the bishop because I lose f4, so this move makes a lot of sense to me. I don't think I should fear the double isolating of my c pawns because black would have to pay a heavy price in giving up the dark square bishop. I'm probably okay with that happening. But yeah, I think I should guard g3. So let's go ahead and play that. And my opponent offered a draw. Not quite sure why. So now g4 becomes a real issue for black, or it could be in the future. Gaining space, kicking the knight back to f6. It's not fatal for black to have to do this, but I think my pawns will roll very nicely after that. e5, for instance. Okay, and black is going to part with this. I don't have any in-between moves I can consider, so this is forced. Hmm. Okay, so attacking the bishop... Yeah, this did cross my mind briefly. I didn't mention it, but I thought for a second about it. So bishop d5, then probably bishop b7 looking to swap. I'd like to keep both bishops on the board. If I pull the bishop back to a2, maybe black's idea is to play bishop a6 and look for a trade that way. Something coming into c4, bishop or knight. But then again, I get knight e5 if black does that, so perhaps bishop a2 is playable. Do I care if black plays c4 and tries to slam the door on my bishop? I probably should care to some degree, because that bishop will just be stuck for the foreseeable future. Yeah, bishop a2, c4. Hmm. Therefore, maybe I should drop the bishop back this way instead. I don't like d3 again because of c4, or maybe even maybe even just bishop e6, again, looking for something coming into c4. I kind of want to keep the d-file open. So bishop e2, but then knight f6 is awkward. Yeah, I might have issues with this pawn. I guess I can play knight d2 there, but I don't like the direction I'm heading. Hmm. Let's look at bishop d5 again. Bishop d5, bishop b7. Maybe I just trade, let's say that swap, and then somehow exploit this. It's hard to do that, though, because g4, just knight f6. So I'm in a bit of a bind here, because I'd really like to keep my bishops, but my pawn structure is now worse, and I have to make sure that my light square bishop doesn't get completely restricted from the game. Could also play bishop d5, bishop b7, c4, but now nah, that looks too fragile. I don't like it. Bishop e2, looking at that move once again. Maybe knight f6, knight d2, bishop b7, bishop f3, something along those lines. I don't think I'm better here anymore. In fact, I might be a little worse. I think I underestimated bishop takes c3 check. None of these lines seem to be working in my favor. Bishop d3. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't like that either. Just bishop b7. Going back to bishop a2. Bishop a2, c4. That looks critical. It's possible I can get my bishop out later. Maybe I shouldn't write that line off completely. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to play this move. It might backfire, but bishop e2 or bishop e d3 or even bishop d5, those moves were looking unappetizing. So I'm going to gamble and see if c4 is really anything to worry about. At least c4 will make the game double-edged. Black will have to protect that pawn at all times. But in playing this move, like, there's a real chance my bishop is just going to be bad on this diagonal. Like, maybe even just e6 blocking it completely and keeps c c4 in reserve for later. Black goes back to f6, okay. Attacking the pawn. Knight d2 or knight g5, I have to play against this move. Knight g5, black will simply play e6 and block the attack on f7. And I can at least play e5 then. e5, knight d5, rook d1. Maybe make something happen there. Knight e4 coming. Okay, let's try it. Burning a lot of time. I felt that that decision on the previous move was too important to pass up a long think, though. And now c4 is played. Okay. I missed c4. I thought black had to play e6. <laughs> you can tell this is going in an excellent direction, isn't it? Okay, bishop d4. Now I think I have to eliminate this knight. Because e5, knight d5 suddenly doesn't look so great when black hasn't played e6. e5, knight d5, rook d1, just bishop b7, I think. c3 is loose. Okay, let's do it. I am in full-on damage control mode right now. If bishop b7, I believe I have to protect this pawn before taking on f6. I can't take yet because after e takes f6, my knight and the pawn on e4 will both be under attack. So I think I have to go rook hg1 to start. And we'll keep this rook to come to the center, perhaps d1 or even b1. h6 is going to force me to take on f6. And I'm expecting just e takes f6. I don't think black wants to take on g5. It's playable, but e takes f6 looks more normal. And then I'll play knight f3, which at least guards the invasion square on d2. But black is simply a lot better. Black plays an in-between check. Hmm. Really? So if I play here, attacking the rook, I can take one of these pawns or even guard their rook, but that seems like a very odd decision with both of these pieces under attack. Black doesn't even take one. All right, well, let's play this move. I'm not even going to contemplate rook e2, because after trade and then e takes f6, I would just lose this pawn. So, got to go for these complications. 
But yeah, that strikes me as an odd decision, given that black could have just taken one of my pieces there. I would think that almost everyone would play e takes f6 in that position. But no, black is going the greedy route. Black does have a point in that both these pieces are under attack. It just seems, I don't know, excessively complicated. But who am I to judge? I have a clearly worse position. And I've had a clearly worse position from about move 12 or so. <laughs> okay, so rook takes c2. Yeah, I can't save either of these pieces. I can try to counterattack this rook, but bishop b1 is short-lived. I think black just goes here. Okay, I'm going to take on e7, and then if black takes here, I guess I'll just take with the bishop. But this rook on the second rank is concerning. Black can also take this pawn with check whenever they want, but I think I needed to do something about that. Okay, rook e8. Yeah, that's a good move. That's a very good move. So now, if I play the bishop back to f6, black takes on g5, and I'm staring down the barrel of rook takes e4. Not good. I'm dead lost here, so I'm just looking for the best way to try to complicate the position, confuse the issue. Unfortunately, I don't see a whole lot. In every case, my king is on the chopping block. Maybe I should throw in bishop b1. But then I lose the b3 square, so even that is looking pretty bad. Maybe e5? I feel like I have to block that attack on e4 somehow. All right, we'll try e5. Yeah, black just takes the bishop. So this was my idea, knight e4. To temporarily defend this, maybe convince black to part with their light square bishop. Which black does. So now black has a choice of which pawn they want to take. Takes the c pawn. I like this line because I got some temporary activity. I mean, not enough to save the game, I don't think. What am I down, a pawn here? Only a pawn. Hmm. This pawn is under attack, so I feel like I should play rook e3. I hate to trade another set of pieces, but it might be forced. Then again, after the trade, I think black just plays rook d7. It's looking pretty busted. Okay, well, I gotta try it. Rook c2. Let's go g4. Rook c2 is another move I don't understand. Not that it's a bad move necessarily, it just did not seem nearly as straightforward as take take and rook d7 with rook d3 in mind. Here, at least I have some chances for hope. I mean, my rook is 
doing a good job on the third rank. Maybe I can push my pawn up to f5, get something going here. That rook comes over. Hmm. You know, the big problem, though, is just my bishop. So with that move, rook d2 is in the air. My bishop is just stuck, isn't it? And if bishop b1, I'm going to put myself in a pin after rook c1. To say nothing of knight b3. <laughs> yeah, can't activate the bishop. I can't move the rook. Do I bring myself to play a4, rook d2, rook a3? That looks so awful. I'm sure there's many ways to refute that, but do I have anything better? I can play rook e1, I suppose, preparing bishop b1, but that too is no picnic. You know what, though? Desperate times. So I would think rook d2, just double up on the second rank. Rook d3 also looks good. If black wants to go after these pawns. Ah, uh, no, but on rook d3, bishop b1 would be strong, because then I'd be scaring both rooks. So probably rook d2. I'm trying to coordinate my pieces, but yeah, even after this, I'm almost completely uh, bankrupt of moves. Bishop b1, rook b2. How do I stop knight b3? I can't. It's a picturesque position, so we'll go for it. I didn't have any alternatives. <laughs> I guess I have to play a4 there after rook b2. Rook b2, a4, so I can give myself the a3 square. Now rook check, okay. Uh-huh. So maybe black is going for the pin, the mortal pin after that. Well, I have to take... So king up, just rook e1, with unstoppable knight b3. King d4 runs under the fork, so I can discard that. King f3 just allows rook e1. Yeah, nothing to be done. Okay, I'll play king d5 because it's the most accurate move. If this was King of the Hill, I would have won by now. Just want to put that on record. Yep, Rook D2 is accurate. My King wasn't getting in anywhere anyways, but that just pushes me further back. And now Rook D1. And at that point, I can safely resign because there's absolutely nothing to do. I'm totally pinned and busted. Yeah, nothing's going to happen with my center pawns. This is way too slow. Okay, so let's toss in the towel, wave the white flag. Just got crushed that game. Just one of those games where you get absolutely destroyed. So I believe that the decision to allow bishop take c3 was critical. And that may mean that h3 is just a bad move. So trying to think back on where this went horribly wrong, I think it was right here. Or at the very least, on this move. Because now this introduces bishop takes c3 as a threat. 
And it's surprising, even though bishop takes c3 gives up a piece for black that is traditionally very strong in this opening, it's surprising how quickly my position became completely devoid of counterplay. You know, I had a feeling bishop a2 was going to be bad, but I was not enamored by the alternatives at all. Bishop d3 and bishop e2 and bishop d5 all looked bad in some degree, so I played this almost out of desperation to try to get an interesting game. Maybe go black into playing c4 and attempting to prove that that pawn is weak. Pretty optimistic. But I think this position is just bad. There's probably not too many other moves to consider. I mean, stuff like bishop b5 or bishop f1 looks downright ridiculous, so I didn't seriously consider those moves. So I'm going to take a look at this position and also this position. I think I was effectively lost by about here, after c4. This piece is out of the game. I didn't get the attack on f7 that I was looking for. I just missed that c4 was playable here. I thought black had to play e6 first. And then at least I soften up some of the dark squares around black's king. I was going to go e5, put the knight on e4, and try to fight on. Black would have still had to solve some issues there. I'm just having this weird sense of deja vu because I feel like I played either this exact position or something close to this before. And even in the game I'm thinking of, I believe I had some issue with the g3 square, although I think I won that game. I'll try to link it in the comments. And going even further back, I'll have to check how playable this c5 move is. I'm sure it's completely playable, but was capturing on c5 and then trading queens and then playing bishop e3 the best thing to do? Bishop e3 looks so natural, but maybe even that is a mistake. So my bishop presents itself as a nice target for black always with knight g4. And if I have to play h3 to stop knight g4, then I weaken that g3 square. Just this domino effect. Oh, and a3. So the purpose of this move, as I was briefly explaining, is to try to discourage black from playing c5 this early before castling. Because in that case, I could take. And if we get the trade, black wouldn't want to have to inconvenience their king slightly. After c5, d takes c5, black could play queen a5. But then white has b4. That's the real point of the, the a3 move, so that b4 is prepared indirectly, stopping c5. Don't have too many comments on the subsequent play. After c4, black just played solid, tactically sound, and strong chess. I don't think I was ever in the game after this. Like I said, some of these moves surprised me, like check, and then nonchalantly picking up the pawn on c2. Tactically, it does look justified, because I do have these two loose pieces. But I was surprised how quickly black played that. Yeah, and this is all misery. Mostly in view of my bishop. That's the major storyline of this game, that bishop being blocked out by the pawn. And even this was a very good decision. Rook c2. I thought this gave me a fighting chance, but in view of this idea, and the fact that bishop b1 is always met by a pin on the first rank, I'm just done for. Okay, let's click over to the board. So... I'm not surprised by the stat line in this game. I had four inaccuracies, three mistakes, zero blunders for a 29 average centi pawn loss. My opponent had zero inaccuracies, zero mistakes, zero blunders for an 11 average centi pawn loss. And as I also suspected, people are already speculating in the chat about whether my opponent used a, an engine or not. So I'm often put in these dilemmas when I'm playing online, and it's happened a lot on Lee Chess. And, you know, it happens on every server, but I think because I've been playing a lot of my longer games on Lee Chess, I've just ran into this, and even some of the shorter games too, Bullet and whatnot. So I'm not going to comment on whether I think this uh, person is a, an engine or not. I mean, you always have to give people the benefit, benefit of the doubt. I never want to encourage a witch hunt or anything like that. I feel like that's a PSA I always have to put out there. But it is a possibility when you're playing online, and I trust that if it did occur that it will be dealt with. But for me to sit here and speculate is kind of just pointless, right? Like if I'm wrong, I'll just look bitter and uh, I'll be encouraging 
a poor innocent chess player who played a good game against an international master um, to be attacked. And if I'm right, it, you know, it won't matter because justice will be served anyways. That person will be banned. So we'll see what happens, but I'm mostly interested in how poorly I played in this game because I shouldn't lose this fast, regardless of who I play. Be it a master, be it 1200, be it stockfish, I shouldn't lose this fast with white. <laughs> so let's take a look at the opening book. Lee Chess has this nice feature with the opening book. So on move six, black played c5. We're still in book here. And do I have the right opening book selected? I always forget to do this. Oops. Yeah, it's the master's database. I recommend looking at the master's database always over the Lee Chess database because you get more high quality games. So, all right, c5. Yeah, d takes c5 is the only move played. And what about back here too? I was, yeah, knight f3 is the only move played. Okay, makes sense. So c5, d takes c5, d takes c5, trade the queens, and now play e5 right away. And that's been played in eight games. Okay, why was I hesitant to play pawn e5? I don't know why. I don't even think I mentioned that move. I guess I was focused on just keeping my pawns side by side for the time being. e5. Yeah, if black has to put the knight on the back rank, then... I can see the point of it. I didn't want to give up the f5 square without it, without due cause. But yeah, probably e5 is just the best move. And that bishop e3, while gaining a tempo, contains that drawback of the fact that now knight g4 will always hit the bishop with tempo. Just looking at the stats after e5, white scores well. Yeah, black playing knight d5 or knight e8, and... Plenty of victories there for white. Okay, so mental note, e5 should be played. And probably then bishop e3 after that. Like in the case of knight e8, bishop e3 makes a lot of sense. So as played b6, I go bishop c4. And already Stockfish starts to prefer black. Ever so slightly. In fact, my problems with the e4 pawn might be significant enough where, yeah, I should play bishop d3. And just defend it. Okay, knight c6. Yeah, it looks fine. Now h3 is the top move, according to the computer. Guard the g4 square. h3, knight h5. Yeah, you know, in a weird way, I was happy to see knight h5 because I just didn't give bishop take c3 all that much credit. But... We'll take a look at this continuation. So king f2, bishop takes c3, pawn takes c3, yeah, knight a5. And here's that big decision about where to put the bishop. I spent a lot of time on this move. I spent something like, what, four minutes on this move? Yeah. My move was probably a mistake, but like I said, I wasn't liking the position, even after a, a more sane move like bishop d3. Maybe I overreacted, though. Let's take a look. So bishop d3, uh, knight f6. Knight d2, bishop b7. Yeah, I was envisioning something like this where all my pieces are pushed back and I always have to watch out for c4. Computer says play c4 here. Inherently, I much prefer black in view of these pawns and you can see that the bishop pair is restricted. But this would be much better compared to the game. Yeah, I think I was rattled at this point because of how confidently Black had played this, and the fact that it took me by surprise. I decided to swing for the fences right away, but yeah, Bishop A2 was not good, I think, in view of the game continuation. What about Bishop E2? Bishop E2, yeah, knight back to F6. I have to go passive here. Whoa, don't want to go to board editor. <laughs> okay, Bishop B7. Bishop f3. Yeah, rook here. This is a similar story. Black has pressure on e4. Black's getting ready to double up. I think I'm just solidly worse here. More so than in the other line, even. But still, bishop a2 was an error, for sure. 
And now knight f6. Okay, so interestingly, knight g5 is the best move. But in my mind, it wasn't, because I overlooked c4. I thought I was going to get this, and then be able to play e5, and do some wizardry like this. This is what I was looking for when black has to worry about my knight jumping in here or here in the future. But c4, that shuts down a lot of my, my options. And it's possible that this evaluation is uh, even a little generous to white. It could be much worse than this. It could be minus one and a half or minus two at this point. Sometimes the computers have a hard time. It's that horizon effect. They have a hard time evaluating the implications of long-term ideas and pieces that are just out of the game, like this bishop on a2. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was a generous assessment for white. Oh, one thing I forgot to do, which some of the people in the comments, some viewers were mentioning that I should turn on multiple lines. Let's turn on, let's say like three. This is what I usually have in my chess base when I'm analyzing. So three lines for the computer to suggest. Then you can see the array of different moves. Okay, so c4. And I played bishop d4. That move also doesn't look great. Here I was just trying to deal with the threat of h6, which will drive my knight away and then allow black to play knight takes e4. So I was trying to do that. Bishop d4. Yeah, then bishop b7. It's a good move. Put more pressure there. And I played this. Once again, trying to reinforce e4, but h6 comes. I take here. Yeah, now rook d2. Just a good move. Yeah, and then take on c2. And despite the fact that I have both of these pieces present, and I'm up a piece for now, I can't do anything. <laughs> the position is just so bad. Bishop b1. Yeah, I thought that would just be met by rook takes g2. The only thing that's kind of annoying about this multiple variation view is that uh, there's so many arrows that get drawn so quickly. So rook takes c2, yeah, bishop takes e7, rook e8, putting the bishop under attack again. No reason to take on g5 yet. This is even stronger. I played e5. Didn't know what to do at this point. I thought if I moved the bishop out and then take, I would just have too many issues here. The engine says this is maybe a slightly better chance, but... When king f3 and bishop takes c4 are my top moves, it's not looking too hot. <laughs> this is a funny idea. Take and then play here, trying to fork both of these pieces. I'm sure that shouldn't be good, though. Rook takes g2, take on c4, take on f4. Mm -hmm. Blacks up a little material and my king is completely open. Yeah, you know what? I don't like the multiple line view. Sorry, guys. I may go back to it in the future, but it was just bothering me, all those arrows. I think I can turn the arrows off, but we'll just stick with one arrow in one line for now. So e5, he takes my bishop. I retreat the knight to e4, covering the, the c3 pawn, but this was just destruction. Yeah, take on c3. I try to trade. And rook c2, good move. Let me just check this variation too, because I thought this was just much, much better for black, if not winning. But this at least gives me some hope of getting my bishop out someday. Yeah, king e2 in preparation for maybe this, although even that's not ready to be played yet. Yeah, this is also completely crushing, I believe. But rook c2 is even better. I just can't move that bishop. I got bishop b1 in, but after the trade of rooks, not much more to look at. Knight b3 on the way. Okay, so what did I learn from this game? If I'm going to play this line in the future, I have to play e5 here. 
Bishop e3 on its on its own is not so good. You got to preface it with e5 and try to drive the knight to an inferior square, either e8 or d5. That's what's been played before. And I think even though my play looks logical with these moves, bishop c4 and then h3, this idea is so strong, I think I already have to be extremely careful in this position. If I knew how strong bishop takes c3 is, I might even play e5 here, just to block the bishop. I know that allows knight g3, but this would be the lesser of the evils. At least then, black's bishop is biting on granite. I have a better chance this way, I think. I think this game also demonstrates how, against a player who's playing accurately, just a couple inaccuracies can snowball very quickly. So, you know, even right here, after knight a5, like, I started to have a bad feeling, but it didn't seem to me that the position warrants panic. But I did, in effect, panic by playing bishop a2. Yeah. I was refusing to go passive with bishop d3 and knight d2 and whatnot, but if I want to continue in this game, I think I have to. Okay. All right, that's how it goes in chess. Some days you're rocking people, and some days you get rocked. So I'll try again next time. And thank you guys for watching. Hope this was an enjoyable video, and I'll be back again soon with another one. All right, guys. Bye.